Hey guys, Scott Herman, welcome back to the channel. So you saw the title and thumbnail and you're wondering why is Scott making a chest training 101 video when he has loads and loads of chest training content already? Well, social platforms nowadays are full of advanced training techniques and secrets to unlock more chest growth. And while, yeah, of course, there are advanced techniques that can help you with more chest growth, once you reach a certain point, you've got to understand that unfortunately, a lot of these tips and new exercises that you haven't seen before are just clickbait fluff content to fill an influencer's posting schedule. For the vast majority of you watching, the basics is all you'll need to maximize muscle growth. And to be honest, trying to go too deep into advanced techniques will most likely stall your muscle growth more than help it. Also, notice that I never use the word beginner, and that's because the basics apply to everyone. If anything, the longer you train, the more lost you might feel because social media has convinced you that you always need to be switching things up. So let's take a deep breath, refocus, and dive right in after you tap that like button and comment below, I want gains to help boost the YouTube algorithm. And also, once the video is over, if you learned a lot, maybe share this video with a friend who's just starting out in the gym so they don't feel as overwhelmed. All right, chest training 101, the exercises. Now, basic is the theme of this series. So forget about any of those fancy exercises you see on Instagram. Instead, we'll focus on four fundamental movements that will set the foundations for your chest growth. The first exercise is the push-up. Even after training for over 20 years, I still incorporate variations of push-ups into my programming. But form is key here. Half reps and baby pumps are pointless. So if this is you, you need to stop and pay attention. Push-ups are key in developing your pressing strength while also strengthening your serratus, shoulder blades, and core. So when you're going up and down, you need to focus on what's happening from head to toe. Starting from the bottom, keep your feet together, tuck your pelvis, and flex your glutes. Contract and squeeze your core, elbows are slightly tucked, and your shoulders are not rolled forward. Then as you lower your body, bring your chest to the ground. And as you press up, don't stop as soon as your elbows lock. You need to press through your serratus all the way to the top. What a big difference between proper form and a baby pump push-up, right? Then once you've mastered proper form, you can find more push-up variations to train with by clicking this video link right here. Exercise two is the chest press, and this should become your primary chest training exercise once you've mastered the push-up. I say this because the chest press, just like the push-up, is actually a full body movement, but with the potential to press a lot more weight. However, most guys just lay down, grab the barbell, and start flailing their arms around. And then they get upset when they don't see any real progression in terms of strength or muscle growth. But don't worry, it's not your fault. You just need a better understanding of the exercise. You see, the chest press actually begins at the feet. They need to be planted on the ground so that you can create the stability you need throughout your entire body to lift as heavy as you can. Personally, I like to first find my hand placement on the barbell and then pull my chest to the bar to get my foot positioning done. Then from here, I swing under the barbell and plant my shoulders on the bench. Next, I slide up the bench and use the friction to help pack and depress my shoulder blades until my eyes line up with the barbell. Then from here, I lower my glutes to the bench while keeping them flexed, which will create an arch in my lower back. Then I push my knees out, take in a breath to stabilize my core, and then I unload the weight. Now, if done correctly, your elbows should be slightly tucked in towards your core and you should have no problem bringing the barbell down to your chest as you perform your reps. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, wow, that's a lot to take in. Well, that's actually a good thing because it goes to show you that you might not have known as much as you thought you did about the basics of one of the most common exercises when it comes to chest training. But if you think you need a bit more help with proper form, you can check out my how-to bench press video right here. The third exercise is the dip. Now, unlike the bench press, during dips, your upper body is not supported by the bench and your feet are off the ground. Therefore, it requires more stabilization and activates more muscle groups. But to target your chest correctly, you want to lean slightly forward on the dip bars and keep your head down. This will help you move quite a bit of the focus from your triceps to your chest. 
Then as you get stronger, utilize a dumbbell and add weight and continue to progress with the movement. But be warned, if dips are not currently a staple in your programming and you've been training for a while, still start with your body weight. Just because you can bench 225 pounds doesn't mean you should load up two plates on the dips. First, you need to acknowledge and improve the instability you might feel in your wrists and shoulders now that you're working through a different movement pattern. But don't worry, after a week or two, you'll be adding weight to the exercise. The fourth and final exercise is the dumbbell incline press. Now you could do a barbell press version of this instead, obviously, but most guys I see in the gym incline pressing never really bring the barbell all the way down to their chest, or if they do, they bounce it off the top. Not good for chest growth. So let's stick with dumbbells so you guys can pack those shoulders tight, avoid the bounce, and go a bit deeper on those reps to get a better stretch on your chest. As for your form, it's very similar to the flat bench. Feet flat on ground, knees pushed out, glutes and core flexed, slight lower back arch, and shoulders packed. Also, pay attention to your elbows again here and make sure they stay tucked in slightly forward. A slight flaring as you press the weight up is okay, but if they look like this, you're going to absolutely wreck your shoulders. Now let's talk about how much weight you should be lifting. I don't want any of you to feel like if your max weight isn't going up, you're not making gains. Remember, the goal here is to make this fitness thing a permanent part of your lifestyle, right? So in the beginning, of course, you're going to see big jumps in how much weight you're lifting. But after a while, those jumps will get smaller and smaller, especially if you're more of a recreational gym goer versus a power lifter. Also, the mindset of always having to add more weight has caused a lot of guys to develop this mentality that they need to start their working sets with lighter weight just so they can add weight with each set. Don't be that person. Instead, understand that lifting heavy is not particularly necessary to build muscle. It's not the heavy lifting that builds the muscle, it's progressing your intensity. And this can be done a few different ways. Yes, of course, adding more weight is a clear option, but progression can also be achieved by adding more sets and reps, increasing the intensity of the set with shorter rest periods, adding drop sets and supersets, or even adding in forced repetitions with a spotter. All of these are considered ways to progress over your previous workouts and will force growth. But before you start doing any exercises, you need to warm up. And I don't mean just a lighter set of your bench press before your working sets. Instead, before any training session, I recommend you do either some light cardio, like a five minute easy jog to get your blood pumping, or a quick circuit of body weight exercises like push-ups and air squats to achieve the same goal while also working on your mobility. Now, I'd also recommend you do some shoulder specific warmups before and in between your working sets, especially if you don't have the best mobility. Personally, I keep a band in my gym bag for this very reason. This way I can hit shoulder breakers between sets to help me loosen up. Single arm shoulder rotations work great too. Just make sure you do these with your shoulders supported and do not do them standing. That's not good for the shoulder joint. Next up is range of motion. Guys, 99.999% of you, unless you have a shoulder injury that's impacting your mobility, will be able to bring the barbell to your chest if your form is correct. So, if you currently can't bring the barbell to your chest, your thought process shouldn't be coming up with excuses like, my arms are too long because I'm tall, it should be, hmm, I wonder what I'm doing wrong that is impacting my mobility and holding back my gains. And believe it or not, nine times out of 10, the major adjustment I have to make with my clients to fix their range of motion is getting them to learn how to depress their shoulder blades. So you might be packing, but you could not be depressing before you unrack the barbell. Also guys, if you don't fix your range of motion now, you're setting yourself up for a huge possible injury in the future. Remember that if you can say bench 225 pounds for 10 reps, but you stop at 90 degrees on those reps, your muscles and tendons below that point do not have the same strength that's built up over time through doing sets and reps, right? Progressive overload, all that factors into your strength. So that one day when you decide to bring that heavy load all the way down to your chest, you could be finding yourself with a one-way ticket to Snap City 
with a pop chest tendon. Very scary. Another thing I want to address is using a shorter range of motion. Guys like to claim this builds more muscle, but the reality is that they just want to lift more impressive weight. Well, I'm not impressed, but people who don't know better might be. The truth is that work equals weight times distance, which means the further you move the weight, the more work you're putting in and the more muscle fiber activation you'll have in your chest during your reps. All right, so let's wrap up our chest training 101 and talk about frequency and the workout split. I know you're eager to see gains, but training your chest every day will most likely lead to overtraining and training only once a week may not be enough total volume to see growth. I'd say two times a week is your optimal training frequency and that's because your muscles need about 48 to 72 hours to recover from a hardcore workout. That's about two to three days. So if you say train chest on Monday, you'll be good to go again on Thursday. As for the workout, just keep it simple guys. The whole point of this series is back to basics. So take the tips you learned today and apply them to your training. A great workout you can start this week would be bench press, four sets, eight reps, dips, four sets, eight to 10 reps, incline dumbbell press, three sets of 10 to 12 repetitions, and then finish off with three sets till failure of push-ups. Or if you're looking for something a bit more structured, you can click this link right here and try my push-pull legs program. It's a three-month program that gradually increases the intensity of your workouts over time. So if you've never hit the same body parts twice a week, by month three, you'll be strong enough to handle that kind of intensity. Be sure to tap that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and check out this playlist for more quick tips. See you guys.